we saw on Saturday, there's a, a, a point where I think it was eight guys came off the field. You got some younger guys on. Uh, I think it's similar, maybe a little bit to what you did against TC, although I think the offensive line maybe wasn't included in that one. What, what was the, the thinking there that versus maybe just working those guys in one at a time yeah. to get some experience? And what do you think those guys gained from it and uh, how that went? Yeah, just getting live reps. You know, I, I think we talk about it all the time, but from a experience standpoint, you got to live it, you got to go do it. And so wanted to get those guys involved and were able to, felt like that was the right time. Um, you know, kind of knew exactly what we were going to get to with those guys in the game. And they uh, they executed and, and did, did what we wanted to get done. And did you know a specific time you wanted to try to get them in or is it just the feel of the game at that point? Yeah, we wanted, we wanted it to be sooner than later. You know, I, you look, Two weeks ago, our guys played 102 snaps, whatever it was. And so being able to get some of the young guys in early so that if they are playing later in the game just to create some freshness, uh, you don't you don't want that to happen late. You know, So you'd rather that happen early, and, and that, was, uh, that was the thought behind it. Yep. A, a lot of the defensive line talent so far you faced in the Big 12 has come at the edge. Baylor has – a lot of beef up the middle. What kind of different uh, challenges does that present the offensive line? Yeah, they're, I mean, they are. They're really, really stout inside, uh, have played really well. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think for us it's about being really efficient, being really good on first down, finding us in some better third down situations uh, and, and staying on the field to, to create, uh, you know, as much stress as we can for them defensively. But they're incredibly stout inside and, and playing well. On Saturday, spoke about the weapons you guys had in the, the kicking game, and with, with Michael Turk specifically, I asked Ted about it and what it does for the defense. What does his kicking ability and him being one of the best in the nation, what he does, do for you guys on offense? No, it's it's a huge deal. I mean, I think you saw those guys on Saturday be a huge part of why we were able to have a happy locker room, you know, and played their butt off and did exactly what we needed them to do, uh, flipping the field, scoring points. Uh, so just great to see they've been. They're so steady and so good for us, and will continue to be. All right. Hey, Jeff. Uh, easy thing is to say Dylan's back. That's why the offense is playing better. But, I mean, just what else are you seeing out of the unit just as a whole these past few weeks that has really impressed you? Yeah, I think we've continued to get better week by week up front. We did not execute the way we needed to the other day to stay on the field and, and to take advantage of some situations where, you know, felt like we, we could have really – gotten out away from them and to me that changes the entire game and instead of it being 14 points and being a war there at the end you got a chance to get away from them a little bit it's a credit to Iowa State because that's what they do they make it incredibly hard on you you have to make plays down the field and create explosives to get away from them we weren't able to do that but uh, again it's like we talked about after the game proud of the way we played you know not how we played the, the entire time, but we played with great intent and toughness, and I think that's what's shown up as much as anything. Uh, what did you think of your play of your wide receiver? You know, it didn't seem like it was Marvin's greatest day. Yeah. Uh, you know, most of the time they're so good. But yeah. in this game, what did you just think about it? You know, we've had a lot of talks, but for for Marv, it's just having that short memory because I'm going to have one. You know, I'm going to come back to him and. And I know he's going to make those plays. And uh, so that's uh, that's something for him just as he continues to play through this. Uh, you know, things happen early on in the game. Shoot, you got to play the next play and let's go, let's go make plays. And uh, we're, we're going to continue to have a ton of confidence in him. I was proud of Jalil. Jalil, you know, six touches, 100 yards. Uh, had the big touchdown there, but uh, did some really good things, and, and again, we just we were not able to make plays down the field on early downs, especially, and that was uh, that was what kept it from us playing even better. They were defensively; they, they seemed big up front, not only in the middle, but you know they played two ninety at defensive end too. But yeah. overall, what do you see in their secondary? And just how they play in that three man? Yeah, yeah, it's they're big, they're long, uh, they've got really good energy about them. They're playing with a ton of toughness right now, so. Uh, that that's what jumps off the tape. You know, we're gonna have to go take it. They're not gonna give us anything on Saturday afternoon, so that's uh, that's gonna be the plan. Uh, Jeff, 
Dylan said, you know, he's not hesitant at all about running the the ball whenever he's being asked to do it. But since that hit, have you been hesitant to make that call? And how important is the quarterback run, run game going to be for balance? No, I, th- I think he's going to do it when when it's needed. You know, just to be able to keep people honest. There was a couple of different times in the game where you saw that that were. You know, a couple of big conversions, one on a third down, one on a second, two, where he kept the football and then had a chance for a couple more there uh, in the in the red zone that we don't execute cleanly that, uh, that that were called runs for him. So he'll do it situationally for us, and uh, and he, he's got a good feel. And then I thought he did a really nice job on a couple of scrambles, being able to keep a couple things alive. Instead of being second and ten and throwing it away, he's able to go gain five yards and six yards and, and keep things alive. So he'll he'll do it as he needs to. Jeff, you mentioned Jaleel just a little bit ago. I wanted to ask you more about him. Just What have you seen from his growth from the first of the season to now, and, and how have you seen his role kind of evolve and, and, and fluctuate in the offense? Yeah. Uh, his understanding of the offense, of what he's being asked to do, uh, that to me is where the greatest growth has been. And then he's now he's playing a lot of football. You know, Again, he hadn't played a ton of ball. He's played a bunch, um, obviously, all year. So that's where you've seen a ton of growth. So he's got great understanding. He's done a really good job working, being the same guy every single day. We talk about that a ton and uh, excited about where he's going. You mentioned 100 total yards for him. It gets a, a defense that's as tough as Iowa State is. Yeah. So how big is that for him? Is that something that you know can, can help him as you know you go down the stretch of the season? Yeah, I, th- I think so. He'll continue to build on it and creates good momentum for him and for all of us uh, offensively just to have another weapon. Uh, have had a pretty good understanding of what he's capable of doing, and he's continued to you know, just stack days and get better every week. So excited about where he's at. Yeah, uh, Jeff, uh, on the deep throws, um, looked like one kind of went through Mars' hands. Yeah. A couple were defended, but looked like they might have been overthrown. Do you just rep that? Do you just get better at it by, by doing it out here in practice? Is that the only way? Yeah, I, th- I think uh, after going back and looking at the tape and really felt it in the game, um, from a deep shot standpoint, really liked ball placement uh, all, all day. Had a chance to run under a couple that we didn't, uh, just bodying up the ball in the air, uh, but really did like the ball placement uh, throughout the day. So, again, have talked about it a number of times already here in the last five minutes, but not making competitive plays down the field uh, kept the game really close. And they, they challenge you, and they make it hard, but uh, you you got to make those plays to get away from guys like that. I think Dylan averaged uh, 15 and a half yards per completion yeah. uh, with you guys at UCF. This year he's down to about 13.7, yeah. I think. Team is 12.7. How big is that role? How big does that play a role in your offense? Uh, yeah. The deep ball, the deep throws. You know, we we want to have the ability to create chunk plays. You know, I'm, I don't think that's uh, that's news to anybody at all. We we want to be able to do that. So pushing the ball down the field and making those plays is going to be a big part of. Who we are will continue to play that way while staying patient and, and taking what people give us. So we want to create great balance, play with tempo, and then, of course, have, have explosives and take care of the football. So we'll continue to work that and, and uh, be in a good spot with it. Uh, Coach, I know you were with Javante on uh, Saturday, and Eric and Marcus did the majority of it. Just curious, we saw Eric kind of limp off the field towards the end, too. So behind those three, though, where are you depth wise, you know, Gavin? Uh, yeah. Tawi, and I know we haven't really talked at all about Intavius. I don't know if he's really involved at all. Just curious, the depth behind the top three guys. Yeah, Gavin and, and Tawi both went on the trip. Obviously, Javante did not, as you mentioned, but both of those guys have gotten great work, great reps um, throughout practices and throughout uh, the weeks as we've gotten ready to go play. So uh, feel good about where both those guys are as well. In your time at Baylor, you saw you saw OU at a couple of different kind of places in terms of where they were. You were there when RG3 had his big game against them, saw them in 13-14, and then saw where they got to in 15-16. What do you remember about those matchups? Yeah, uh, really good football games, uh, good football teams that, uh, you know, it was, it was done on the field. And uh, I think as you look at this Saturday, you know, talked about it a little bit, but they're playing really good defensively. They're playing tough. They're playing physical. And we're gonna to have to go take it and go earn. And Mason Young, second round. Jeff, 
Marcus, what did you, what were your kind of evaluations after now having seen his tape from the other day, and, and what more I guess do you need from him moving forward? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just being 100% healthy. I mean, we've got to get a healthy version of Marcus for him to be at his best, to give him the best opportunity to go make plays and and be who he is. So uh, we're excited about getting him to that point. Uh, you know, I don't think we've seen him 100% healthy since really early in the season. So ready to get back to that. Back to your time at Baylor, when you when you got there from uh, until the time you left, what was maybe the biggest element of, of your growth as a coach that that occurred there at Baylor uh, to, to help make you the coach that you are now? Yeah, I think uh, pro- probably just from a philosophical standpoint, uh, uh, the tempo piece of it, the spacing piece of it, and and uh, the attack mindset. You know, I think those are the things that that stand out that'll be part of. Uh, part of who I am for for a long, long time. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.